Hey folks, uh, this will get you guys ready for your Unit 5 test in Integrated Math 3 on Radical Functions, Expressions, and Equations. Alright, let's get started here. So my class next door, I'm on my prep period. They're listening to some Jimi Hendrix. I don't know if you can hear the guitar stuff. So they're reviewing for finals also. So, Alright, can you hear it? pretty good stuff. Anyway, all right, use the function uh, here to answer each. Okay, the first one is find the inverse. So to find the inverse, we let y equal that stuff, and then we switch the x's and the y's. Then we solve for this new y. So let's divide both sides by a negative 54. Then we cube root both sides, and then we got to add 2 to both sides. So there it is right there, okay? Next one says, what is the domain of the inverse? Well, since it's a cube root, we don't have any restrictions. So the domain is uh, is all real numbers. So um, if it was a square root, then we'd have to restrict um, uh, the inside piece to be greater than or equal to zero. So so this inside, if we had this and it was a square root with or a fourth root or a sixth root, then since it's negative in there, then this would actually have to be less than or equal to zero to get a negative times a negative, so it's positive. So anyways, um, square roots, the, the number inside, had the value inside has to be greater than or equal to zero. But cube roots, there is no restrictions. Okay, so here we go. Let g of x equal negative one-third square root of x minus four plus five be a transformation of f of x equals the square root of x. Describe the transformation. Okay, well first, uh, it's being translated to the right four up five. Remember, opposite same right there. And this negative three tells us it's going to be a vertical compression. It's going to be reflected over the x-axis and compressed by uh, vertical compressed by a factor of one third right there. So, <clears throat> so this graph, remember the square root graph, I think we're graphing that coming up, we'll just do that. So now if it was on the inside right there, then this would be, a, this number is a horizontal uh, stretch, but it's being reflected that way over the y-axis, okay? And it's always the reciprocal of this number when it's inside, so one-third means it's going to be stretched by a factor of three. Okay, if that was a 3x, then it would be compressed by a factor of one-third. It's always the reciprocal inside. All right, so here we are. Let's graph these guys. Okay, so let's graph f of x equals the square root of x. Okay, the square root of 1 is 1. The square root of 4 is 2. So when we plug in 4, we get 2. When we plug in 9, the square root of 9 is 3. Okay, so if you don't know what I'm doing, just make a t-chart, x, y, t-chart. And I used the square root of 0 is 0. So I use all x's that are perfect squares to give me a nice square root. So it gives me this um, uh, uh, parent graph of uh, the square root of x. Okay, this one is going to the right 4 up 5. Okay, so there it is right there. All right, now instead of going up, it's going down because it's negative. And it's going down a third of how much it goes, uh, this graph goes up. So this graph goes up one over one. It still goes over the same, but it's going to go down a third over one. This graph goes up two over four, so we're going to go down a third of two, which is two thirds over four. So it goes down a third of how much we went up, but it still goes over the same, okay? This graph, to get to this point, it goes up 3 over 9, so we're going to go down a third of 3, which is 1 over 9. So it's going to get me those guys right there, okay? So if I go down a third, it takes me to 4 and 2 thirds. It still goes over the same amount this goes over, because this is just stretching the vertical part, okay? So this graph went up 2 over 4, so we're still going to go over 4, but we only go down a third of 2, which is um, uh, 2 thirds. So from 5 down 2 thirds takes me to 4 and a third. Okay, this graph goes up 3 over 9, so a third of 3 is 1. It goes down 1 over 9. So the over part adds 9 to the x's, and then we go down 1, that takes off takes off one off the y's right there, okay? There's our graph, okay? And then, um, if we had uh, this graph right there, it would have still gone up the same amount, but it would have went to the left three times. So we would have went up one, actually it would have been right here. We would have went up one to the left three times one. We would have went up two to the left three times four, because that's how much this one went. This one goes up three, so if we go, um, uh, actually, yeah, 
up three, it's going to go to the left because if it was negative, it would go to the left three times nine, which would be 27 over there, okay? And then our domain, if they asked you for a domain, this is the domain in interval notation. So it starts at four and goes to the right forever. Okay, and we're including four, so it has a bracket. Infinity never has uh, brackets. And the range, it looks like it goes down forever, and it gets as high as five. So we always put the smallest number on the left. So negative infinity up to five right there, and that's it, it in interval notation. Okay, let's graph this guy, speaking of that. Okay, so um, here's the parent graph of y equals x cubed. Okay, I'm, yeah, the cube root of x, sorry. The cube root of one is one. The cube root of 8 is 2. The cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. The cube root of negative 8 is negative 2, okay? So this one's going to be um, shifted to the right 1 up 2, so let's do that, okay? And then this 1 third just tells us we're going to go over 3, okay? So this graph goes up 1 over 1, so this graph's still going to go up the same 1, but it's going to go over 3. This graph goes up 2 over 8, so this graph would still go up 2, but it would go over 3 times 8. I don't have enough to go over 24, okay? Same on the other side. So let's just do these two points. We're going to go up 1 over 3, okay? So um, here we go, up 1 over 3, and then just kind of make your graph right there. It's stretching it out horizontally right there, all right? All right, so write this uh, in radical form with positive exponents. Okay, so 5 to a negative power is 1 over 5 to the positive power, okay? And that denominator is our index number for our radical, okay? So you can put the 5 squared here or the 5 squared on the outside. That's good enough for me, okay? All right, so simplify. Assume all the variables are positive. Okay, again, a negative, or I'm sorry, number to a negative power gets flipped and becomes a positive power. And this becomes the index number, so it's the cube root of 125. Okay, uh, boy, I don't know what happened to that to that four right there. This should be a four. I forgot that that got changed. So the cube root of 125 is five. Okay, so we're going to do five to the fourth. Okay, so five to the fourth is uh, five times five times five times five, or six twenty-five. So it's one over six twenty-five. Okay, all right. Here's number two. Okay. So here we have, um, there's all kinds of correct ways to do this, you guys. I think what I'm going to do, I think, I think, I think, I'm going to subtract these exponents right here. Okay, we'll deal with the one-seventh afterwards right there, okay? Yeah, so I did. So here's one-fifth minus three, okay? So one-fifth minus three, I changed three to fifteen-fifths, and one-fifth minus fifteen-fifths is a negative fourteen-fifths. I'm going to keep just fixing that until I'm done. All right, so here's my negative fourteen-fifths, and then powers raised to powers, we multiply those powers, okay? So when we multiply those powers... Um, uh, let's see, negative 14 and 7, 7 goes into 7, and negative 14 2 times, so it's negative 2 fifths. So now it's uh, x to the negative 2 fifths, which is 1 over x to the positive 2 fifths, okay? And so 1 over x to the positive 2 fifths is 1 over the fifth root of x squared. Either one of these is okay with me. Typically, you guys, if they start off with... Um, rational exponents, then rational exponents would be our answer. And if they started off with square roots or any kind of radicals, then we put it back in that form right there. Anyone's okay with me. Okay. All right. On these guys here, I think I did powers to powers right here, and I multiplied 2 uh, over 1 times 3 over 4. 2 over 1 times 3 over 4. 2 goes into 2 into 4. So it becomes 3 halves right there. Okay, now I'm going to subtract these exponents right here. 5 halves minus 3 halves, okay? 5 halves minus 3 halves is 2 halves, and 2 halves is 1, so it becomes y to the 1, okay? And uh, I think that would be our answer right there because it started with rational exponents, so here it is left with rational exponents. Okay, this one starts off with radical, so we're going to uh, end our answers in terms of a radical. Okay, I think even though that's not a radical downstairs. Okay, so there's a little imaginary 2 right there. Let's put it in there, and then, uh, and then it goes x to the inside power over outside index. That's what that says. y to the inside power over outside index, and then x to the 6 ninths, y to the 18 ninths. That's all what that says right there. All right, let's clean that up a little bit right there. 
Okay, 2 over 2 is 1, 18 over 9 is 2. Okay, and then we're going to add these exponents, 3 halves plus 2 thirds. And then we'll subtract off that 1 right there. Okay, and then what I'll do is uh, for the y's, I'll add 1 plus 2 and then subtract off 3. Okay, so there it is right there. <clears throat> and then uh, what I did is I noticed that uh, this is a denominator of 2, this is the denominator of 3, and 1's a denominator of everything as long as you put it over itself. And between 2 and 3, the common denominator is 6. So I mentally multiplied in my head this guy by 3 over 3 this guy by 2 over 2, that way we get 6 in both those denominators, and 1 is 6 over 6. So now they have common denominators. Here's 1 plus 2 minus this 3. That's what this one says for the y's, okay? All right, 9, 6 plus 4, 6 is 13, 6. 13, 6 minus 6, 6 is 7, 6, okay? y to the 0, which is just, um, uh, y to the 0 is 1. Anything to the 0 is 1. And then let's put it back in the radical form. So this is going to be the sixth root of x to the seventh right there. Okay, so that's good enough for me right there. All right, okay, so here let's solve and watch for extraneous solutions. So we need to get the radical by itself, so subtract 2, and then we'll cube both sides, okay? So when we cube both sides, it gets rid of the radical. 6 cubed is 216. Then we'll subtract 1, divide by 5, we get 43. Now let's check it. So put it back up into the original. 5 times 43. 5 times 40 is 200, 5 times 3 is 15, so this is going to be 200 plus 15, or 215, plus 1 right there, okay? So we get 216, and the cube root of 216 is 6, so that's our answer. Our answer is x equals 43. All right, one more, okay. So here we have a quantity to the 1 half power equals a binomial. So to get rid of the 1 half, I'm going to square both sides because powers raised to powers, we multiply them. 1 half times 2 is 1. Okay, and then I foiled out x minus 5 times x minus 5 is x minus 5 squared, and I get that right there. Okay, I'm going to flip it around uh, the equal sign because I like to have the x squared on this side, and then now I'm going to subtract 45 from here and then plus 9x to here. So when I do that, that's going to get me that, and then we factor that. Factors of negative 20 that add to negative 1, negative 5 times 4. Okay, then we set those factors equal to zero. So here we go, plus five, plus five, minus four, minus four. So we um, plug that in, we get x equals five or negative four. All right, now to the one half power is the same as the square root. So when I check x equal five and x equal negative four, I'm gonna make this the square root of 45 minus nine x to check, okay? All right, nine times five is 45. So 45 minus 45 is zero. The square root of zero is zero. Five minus five is zero, that checks out. Okay, negative nine times negative four is a positive 36. 45 plus 36 is 81. The square root of 81 does not equal negative nine, okay? So five works and negative four is extraneous. All right, gang, if you are in my class, I'm gonna let you look at that, take care.